I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on nuclear chemistry. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific, and the author and creator of the Dot Destroyer and Orgo Man products. Nuclear chemistry is a topic that many students overlook, and sometimes you don't even get to it in general chemistry. But on the DAT exam, this is a hot topic with a lot of questions. I have put all the questions you need to be able to kick ass on this test in the Destroyer book. Our up-to-date book, which is now out, has all the new type of questions that you're going to need. So come around and let me show you something that you may be very interested in seeing. These are four very standard type of questions that you're going to encounter. We have an unknown nuclide, which is just a radioactive nucleus, and it has a half-life of 30 years. After 120 years, about three grams are left. First, find the rate constant. And second, what's the original mass of the sample closest to? The first thing I want to do is to write the equation for half-life and rate constant of a nuclear reaction. This is simply a first-order decay process. And therefore, the equation you need to memorize for the dot is K times T half-life is 0.693. T half just means the half-life, which is the amount of time for half of the sample to disintegrate. So all I would simply do is go back. We see that the half-life is 30 years. We put in 30. So it's going to be 0.693 over 30, and the units would, ever be, would be time to the minus 1. So the K would be 0.693 over 30 years to the minus one. That's the way you would set up that equation for the rate constant. What's the original amount closest to? Now, what I always like to do to avoid using any logarithmic equation is to set up a little chart, time and amount. The time is equal to zero, we don't know the original amount. So I put a question mark. Now we know the half-life is 30 years. And we got to go to 120. So let's just fill in the chart. It's 30, then 60, then 90, and then 120. So we're going to be in years. Now, we know that at 120 years, we have 3 grams left. Okay? So 90, there would obviously be double the amount. Because as you're going down, you're cutting some number in half. So this would be 6 grams. So at 60 years... This would be 12 grams. At 30 years, this would be 24. And obviously, this, I'm hoping you can all see some number was half to get 24. That number had to be 48 grams. So it would be closest to 48 grams. And then I put a part C. What would be the alpha decay of 237.93 Neptunium? In an alpha decay, we're going to lose an alpha particle. You should remember that an alpha particle is represented as 4,2-HE++. Sometimes they leave the plus plus out, but it's always good to remember that an alpha particle has two plus charges on it. When you lose an alpha particle, the mass is going to go down by a factor of 4, or by 4, and the atomic number by 2. So 237, and we take away 4, we're going to get 233, and then you can just check it. 233 and 4 is 237. This is a 93. If this is a 2, this has to be a 91. And then you would look up 91, and you would see on the table, 91 is the element protactinium. That's a rare element, but notice we would form protactinium from a single alpha decay of the nuclide neptunium. I hope this helps. I have a lot more really good questions like this. In the video library, we got some really challenging ones, and in the new issue of the Dat Destroyer. But make sure you're very clear what an alpha particle looks like. Notice this alpha particle has two protons. It's got two neutrons and zero electrons. You may thank me for that someday. Okay, good day to you. Bye-bye.